we've seen this over and over again this season. And we've yeah. seen this over yeah. and over again on the road. Like, I was actually looking last night at the Raptors and the games that they've played on the road since January. And I was trying to find the last time that they had just an impressive uh, road win because the wins that they've gotten on the okay. road okay. most recently in order. So the two wins in Charlotte, obviously, most recently. Sure, yeah. Before that, they split in Washington. So they got one oh, in yeah, Washington. Right, right. That was... Before that, they oh. won in Detroit. And then before that, you have to go back to that critical road trip before the trade deadline where mm. they beat Memphis. Uh, Memphis was shorthanded. No jaw, no yeah. Steven Adams, yeah. and no... They, and Scotty, Barnes, Scotty Barnes helped uh, pull that out at the end. Oh, Scotty was, was great a, in that one. Yeah, it was a fourth quarter. Um, you know, that was an impressive fourth quarter for them, but again, against a shorthanded team. And then before that, Houston, Portland. Mm. Like, these are teams that obviously are not in, in, in the playoff race. So you'd have to go back to January 25th um, one of your favorite games of the season when they beat Sacramento to say that they had that a, to, to say that they had an impressive role win. And I think even more concerning too, you talk about the trend of them giving away leads in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. playing games close. So if you go back just within the last like two months, so the Philly game last week, right? Sixers shoot 77% in the first half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Raptors trail by 24. They pull within two in the fourth and then they lose by seven. At Milwaukee, recently, they led heading into the fourth. Brooke Lopez scores the first eight points in the fourth. They make a 15-2 run. They end up winning by seven. Playing against the Lakers, they were up heading into the fourth. Lakers score 37 points in the fourth and win by 10. At Denver, there's a Scott Foster game. Raptors again led heading into the fourth. Nuggets outscore them 35-25 in the mm -hmm. fourth. They win mm -hmm. by five. And then Utah, they were leading into heading into the fourth, and the Jazz scored 39 on them. Outscore them by 19 in the fourth, and they win by six. And then I went to my favorite, you know, I, I did a little net ratings check. Wow, look at this research since, from Alex, man. Since February 1st, so if you only if you isolate only road games for the Raptors in, uh, in clutch time, so everybody knows, I think, clutch time defined by last five minutes a game within five points, right? Yep, yep. The Raptors have a minus 23.5 net rating on the road in clutch time. <laughs> it feels like it, yeah. Since February 1st. Yeah, it passes the eye test because we have sure. seen this over and over again. The Raptors fight and claw after a slow start, get back into the game, and then ultimately lose it in the fourth. And that was exact script last night. Yeah. Um, that's a great recap, first and foremost. I mean, there was such a degree of predictability to sort of what the Raptors were doing in the fourth quarter offensively, mm -hmm. especially down the stretch there. Because like, as you mentioned, like the Raptors were able to tie it at one point. Um, but... And and it wasn't even like the Celtics were humming on offense, right? I didn't think Jalen Brown could really get his against OG, which is a testament to OG. Like, not a lot of guys can make a guy like Jalen Brown struggle on offense. Um, and I, I didn't think that um, even when the Celtics were left open, for the most part, they weren't really knocking those down. Eventually, that did hurt the Raptors. But the Raptors actually even won the fourth quarter in this scenario, four, 21 to, to 18. But they didn't really feel like they won anything last night when you think <laughs> about the offense that was down the stretch. And to be honest, like, Man, three of those three threes for Fred that were missed out of the 11 missed threes for Fred were in the fourth quarter, down the stretch there, including one where this one is seared into my mind. The Raptors are down five. Pascal has the ball, draws a double team, which he's done his job, makes the right pass out to Fred in rhythm, wide open, on the wing, and he misses it. And instead of cutting that to two points with under a minute left and setting your defense, instead Boston gets to run off the rebound Jalen Brown is a terror in transition uh, and Precious is just a little bit late with the chase down block that ended up being a goal 10. So that goes from a, what should have been a two point game to now a seven point game and the game is over. You got to do better fam. Yeah, you really do. You really do. Right. And of course that's where Fred is saying after the game, like I got to take accountability for this, but you know, that's where the Raptors struggle. It's not, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not that surprising to see the Raptors, you know, shoot in this fashion, right? I mean, even without Gary in the group, they were able to win, but it's not like they won it based on their three-point shooting. And so much of the league nowadays is based on three-point shooting. And, and we've highlighted this many times, but the Raptors really only have three guys that are above-average three-point shooters. It's Fred, it's it's OG, and it's Gary. And, and none of those three guys are having a career year with, with, with their shooting. In fact, they're probably lower percentage-wise than on their career. I know Fred is for sure, and Gary's not having a good three-point shooting this season either um and you know I, I think that's one aspect of it but i also do think the other aspect of this okay so yes you missed some shots but are there other ways to get better shots right because you have to think that you know what no matter what like obviously three-point shooting is an aspect of the game but like can you create shots elsewhere and, and i thought you know even post game hearing this from nick I, it, it wasn't great because he talked about how you know 
look, it, it's the Raptors had a lot of shots rim out and the Celtics had a lot of shots rim in. And and to me, it was just like, this sounded like Dwayne Casey saying it's a make or miss league, Doug. Here's the clip. Let's run the clip. Jeez, the in and out score was 18 to two tonight. They had a bunch of eight, they had a bunch of them go in and go back in and we had a bunch of them pop out on the in and out score. So didn't bounce our way. Have you heard a coach talk about the in and out score? No, first of all, you know, with the with the Bulls and Raptors likely playing next week, and you know, Stefano of, of of Sporting News uh, put put out some stats today about the two teams. So they're both in the bottom five, the Bulls and the Raptors, mm. in, in three point makes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna need a in and out sponsorship uh, for for that, that, <laughs> for that Wednesday. That's game. an American. Cause, that's, cause they're not about, even no in and outs in we, Toronto. We about I don't to think see, so. We're about to see some uh, lots of in and outs next uh, next Wednesday Jeez, at Scotiabank. Yeah. But it, it, we're oh, talking about in and out score. Where do I where do in I find games, that stat? Game seventy nine of the season. Where do I find the in and out stats? Listen. Um, no, I don't want to be having this conversation in like game 80 of the season. I'm not going to lie. Like, and... I, I was so, I, it just, I, I wanted to hear like an explanation <laughs> yeah. for the game. Yeah. Or Set at least the scene sort of... though. You were on your scooter as well. You know, you were listening okay, to this fine. on the scooter. Yeah, so typically yeah. I would listen to the post games the night of. Last yeah. night I was just like, I'm going to do the react pod and go to, and just, just do something else. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, I was yeah. trying to, you know, maintain... self-care, self-care, self-care. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Self-care. Um, I'm coming to work and I'm like, all right, what, what can I throw on? I can either throw on the, the Draymond Green podcast with Pascal Siakam, mm. which would have been the right decision, but I was like, nah, let me let me do, let me do my job. I'll listen, let's listen to the post game press conference. Mm. And five minutes in, I'm hearing Nick Nurse talk about the in and out score, and I was like, man, <laughs> emotional damage. No, legit, it was the the, the in and out score, man. That that's that's another way of saying make or miss league, Doug. That's for sure.